Roger, what you doing? It's like noon. You should be asleep. Look at him. Hello. It's late for you. Go back to bed. Hello, and welcome to another vlog. I've been trying to start this vlog for the last couple of days, but the truth of the matter is... Okay, so there's two factors. One, I wasn't getting good sleep. I could not fall asleep for the life of me, so I was grumpy. And not just grumpy. Like, when I'm overtired, I'm like a toddler, okay? Like, I want to cry because I missed my nap. <laughs> so I finally got enough sleep last night, so we're starting to vlog today. Also, I have a lot of chores to do because I've let them pile up because I got Stardew Valley for my birthday and I've never played it before. And so I love video games, but I don't play them very often because A, I'm not very good at them. And also B, I don't have an off button. So if I start playing Stardew Valley, I just play it for like hours and hours straight till my Switch dies. So that's what I've been doing, like days and days and days of Stardew Valley playing. Um, which is, like, not good. <laughs> so, today, we have some plant chores to do. There's a couple of plants that need water. Um, and I also really need to go through my shirt drawer. Because I've recently acquired four new shirts. I'll show them to you. Um, and it doesn't close. Like, if the sh two of the shirts aren't even in the drawer yet, it doesn't close. So, I'm gonna have to get rid of some. So that my shirt drawer will close. So, I thought that might be fun for, to do with you. Especially because a lot of them are just t-shirts. I like all of my nicer shirts for, like, if I need them for, I don't know, like, a job interview or something. They're hanging up in my closet. This is my, like, casual wear drawer that I'm talking about. So, while my, uh, silver sword is soaking, I'm gonna go get the drawer. I'm gonna try to take it out and bring it to my bed, because it'll be easier for you to see. And it'll be heavy, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, I finally found a setup where you can sit. So, it just occurred to me that there's a couple of things that I haven't updated you on. First of all, these two shirts here came from the market that I did a couple weeks ago um, with Alyssa. That was our first market ever, and we're doing another one in June. Um, that was a lot of fun. I sold all of my little crocheted burns, two of the skulls, and a couple of the card slot holders, and Alyssa sold a bunch of, like, uh, bowl cozies and that sort of thing. It was a lot of fun. We'll definitely do it again. It's great. Um, so that's where these two shirts came from. Uh, the vendor is called Midnight Raven Studios. Handmade magic. And I bought this little shirt. Just a little crop top. It's a switch. How cute. I didn't even notice there was anything on the back when I first bought it, but it says, do no harm. Do no harm, take no shit. So it's very cute. And then I bought this one that you're going to love. I think this might become a pajama shirt because it's just not, like... It's like bleach, bleachy stains, so it's not really my style, but it says, be gay, do witchcraft. <laughs> so that one's cute. I really like that one. Um, so about those two. Uh, what else do I have to tell you about? Um, oh, if you see my arm, I was on the toilet the other day, pooping, and Lena decided that was the best time to attack me out of nowhere. I didn't even know she was in the room. It's really frustrating having a cat that likes to hurt you for no reason, but it is what it is. There are so many, like, I don't know if they're ladybugs or the fake ladybugs, the Asian beetles, um, because they're on the other side of the window, but there's so many of them out there. <laughs> and then I bought two shirts from Murder Apparel. They're having like a spring sale, so I finally bought this one that I've always wanted. Hot Cool Summer. I cannot wait. I'm thinking about cropping it maybe a little bit, but I just feel like it's such a cute shirt. I'm going to wear it all summer long. Um, and then I did buy another shirt from them too. Glamour ghoul. Now, because of the way my body shaped, you're only gonna probably be able to see glamour and then her, but that's okay. The hot ghoul summer one, um, you can see all the words. I have to take these things into account when I buy things, you know? Okay, so I just bought this shirt from the superstore the other day. Look how cute. It's just green with that little mushroom, like, on the heart. So we're keeping that. <sighs> this is gonna be hard. <laughs> I'm... I... <sighs> I really want to keep this one. It's just a little crop top. But it's kind of short. So we're going to put it in what I'm calling the maybe pile. This is my crazy plant lady shirt. It's way too fun. We're definitely keeping it. This is just a beige. Tank top. I feel like every wardrobe should have a flesh tone tank top, right? 
the ones at the top here are the ones I wear more often. So, which when we get to the bottom, then it'll be hard. This is my t-shirt with Lily Munster on it. We're definitely keeping that. That's like one of my favorite, like, casual spooky shirts to wear. Now, I got stuff on this one. The problem with me, right, is that I'm always spilling food or something on myself. I'm a slob. I wish I wasn't. <sighs> you can still see it, but like barely. If I wore this, would you notice that there's a stain up here? I think I'm going to keep it anyway. Because you really, it's really hard to see. I have hair. <laughs> so we're going to put my Universal Monsters shirt in the maybe pile. Even though I don't want to. <laughs> now, I love this shirt because Roger's on it, but I think I'm going to get rid of it. Because I think it's too small on me. See, like... But it's got Roger on it. I'm going to get rid of it. I don't think my boobs fit in it anymore. This one we're definitely keeping. Look at it. Incredible. This shirt is inside out, but I'm pretty sure I'm keeping it because it's Evan's spread. This is not going very well. Well, no wonder this drawer was so heavy. There's a two pound weight in it. Beetlejuice, we're also keeping. I think I'm gonna, I love this shirt. I found it at the Superstore one day and it just, it's got a little crystal ball and it just says magic. And I love this shade of purple, but if I recall correctly, there's a big stain on it. And I didn't notice, yeah, it's like a pen or something. Can you even see it? It's right there. I feel like when I wear it, it's all I can see. Which really makes me sad because I really love the shade of purple. But we'll get rid of that. This is my Friday the 13th shirt. I'm not doing very well at getting rid of things, am I? What is this? Frequent, nope. Head witch in charge. I think we're gonna make this a pajama shirt. I really hate wearing it in public because it's like really big on me. So we'll put it in the maybe pile with the thought that I don't think I'm gonna make it pajamas. This is just a little black t-shirt that I wear. What are you? You're a weird fabric. Oh, the shirt's from Wish. <laughs> but it's cute. Look at it. Like I had to keep that. It's like sort of weird like Wetsuit-esque material. Oh, but it's staying. Also staying. I literally just bought this shirt from Temu, so we're keeping it. Look how cute. I'm obsessed with him. I have another shirt from Temu right here that I recently purchased. It's a Fleetwood Mac shirt. So cute. I didn't have anything that's like pinky yet. Like this is mostly black shirts anyway, so I'm definitely keeping that. This is my Lily Munster tank top that I added the spider web sides to. I'm very proud of myself for this. Like this is the tank top. And then I added these like flowy spider webby sides to make it because this is a size small and I usually wear a large. And now it fits. I'm really hoping that when we get to the back of the drawer, that's when we'll find stuff that I don't like to wear as much. This is the shirt that I tried the thing on first, and it actually worked. The way I added the spider webs, I tried it on this shirt first. Just a sourpuss shirt. She looks kind of like she's from Archie or something, but I added these, like, panels on the side. There's a big hair. <laughs> but, see? I think it's cute. I can get rid of this. I've had this shirt for a million years, and it's kind of tight on my arms now. It's just a black shirt with, like, lacy arms, but it's kind of see-through. So every time I wear it, I feel a little exposed. This is my Cruella shirt. Now, when I wear it, I always wear it tucked into something so you can't read the bottom, because the bottom says, Why well, have a boyfriend or you can have puppies? Like, that's so stupid. But the picture of Cruella is cool. This shirt... 
I'm gonna get rid of because it's t-shirt pattern or t-shirt newspaper pattern and I don't know that I'm remembering it exactly correctly but I feel like I bought it for my job interview at the newspaper which is so funny because I got that job and now I don't have it anymore this is a definite keep there's not even a consideration about this because this is my shirt that I bought this evening at concert last year it was a full length shirt and my eldest sister hemmed it for me, made it shorter so that it's abbeable. I want to wear it more often, but I'm always afraid I'm going to, like, get schmutz on it, you know? My skeleton shirt is staying. Okay, now we're getting down to the bottom. What are you? You're inside out. John Carpenter's Halloween! I'm putting this in the maybe pajama pile. <laughs> This is from Unique Vintage. It's definitely staying. Update. There's like no shirts that I'm never going to wear in here. The other shirt in the very back corner is my Have a Very Scary Christmas. And then the other one in the very back corner is Get In Loser. We're going Halloween shopping. So, so far I put four shirts in the goodbye pile, which I added four shirts, so I've just kept it all the same. This is the shirt I bought at the very first concert I ever went to when I saw Demi Lovato. Like, I never wear it, but I feel like I should keep it because it's my first ever concert shirt, right? It's like, look how short it is. That barely covers my boobs. This is my Halloween Town shirt. I'm not doing a very good job of getting rid of something, am I? What are you? That's obviously staying. This shirt I also bought from Timu. It's not the best quality, but it's like a witch lady taking a child. <laughs> I'm definitely keeping that. I'm putting the unique vintage shirt in the bottom. I put Stevie Nicks in the bottom too because I don't wear her very often, but only because I'm terrified of getting stuff on it. I'll get rid of this one too. It's kind of see-through. So. This is still a very full drawer, but it will close now, and that's really what matters. <laughs> They're real ISO certified, so we won't go blind. <laughs> Happy Eclipse Day. Oh, you that's not me, is it? Yeah, it is no, you. Eclipse, stop. new moon, twilight, breaking dawn. Aww. You see the sun? Not yet. There you go. Yeah. Barely. Oh, I had to hold it right against my glasses. Yeah, you can oh, very, you can no. in the glasses. There's so many clouds. But it's so cl it's so cloudy. Are we gonna be able to see it? Can I? That is cool, eh? I'm holding mine tight against it, but like going to help. No, I got it. Is yours working? Yep. My phone just doesn't take very good quality pictures, so I'll have you guys send it. Look how cool that is. Yo, I looked at it with my bare eyes, and it looks awesome. Don't do it for too long, though. No. You can really see it. See, look how cool that is. We're chilling in a Walmart parking lot. Yeah. Isn't that weird? That is Imagine weird. They were bats and not birds at all. That would be Freaking really kick ass. ass. I love these. How, how the, yeah, the dark, the dark so, the distance. Everything that I read on the Weather Network said that the sky will turn an indescribable shape. Look at their right of indigo blue. We're at totality now. Oh, look at the tiny little sliver. That's not covered yet. Oh, I can't see it through the glasses. I can't see it through the glasses either, so I'm going to look at my naked eye. It's, it's so gone. Good. Yep, it was right. It's, like, supposed to be right there. The birds sound confused. Look in the distance. It's a sunset. Yeah. It's beautiful. So what happens now? Does the Dead Moon Circus come? Do we get transmuted? Anybody else feel dizzy and weird? No, no that's just I feel you. Like I have a pressure headache. Okay, so when I write it, I think dizzy spells, it's all funny games. <laughs> Ooh, look behind us. Look at the sky back there. <laughs> Hello. I feel bad because yesterday, literally, all I did was play Stardew and go see the eclipse. But today we are doing something of substance. So some of my seeds here have really taken off and it's time for them to be up potted. Um, and also some of them never took off. 
so I'd like to try them again. Um, uh, so we get the big ones out of here into their own little pots, and then, um, and then we move from there. Now, my only fear with this whole process is I don't really have anywhere to put these. Um, I'm thinking, because I've got those big, nice, sansy grow lights now, maybe, like, if I just put something on the floor, maybe where the toad is, um, I can kind of boost them up near the sansy light. Like, maybe if I uh, put the Ares Tour popcorn bucket upside down or something. Or it is supposed to be, like, beautiful outside today, like 17 degrees Celsius. Like, maybe I just run to the dollar store quickly and grab a step stool. Like, one of the foldy ones. I don't know. It's not a permanent, especially because most of the seeds that I took are milkweed. And they're going to go outside eventually. Um... If you don't know about the importance of milkweed, it is a pollinator's dream, essentially. Pollinators freaking love milkweed, and particularly monarch butterflies. If you have, like, I already was growing milkweed. I already wanted to help the monarch butterflies because they're beautiful and they're endangered and all that. But there's actually a really interesting segment on monarch butterflies on the Disney documentary called A Real Bug's Life. And each episode kind of has a couple of characters and the characters are like real bugs and it shows you their like life and I think it said somewhere in there that it takes seven generations of monarch butterfly to essentially migrate from Mexico to Canada each year like along the way they lay eggs they die and then the next generation takes over the flight and I just I feel so bad like no wonder they're going extinct so, if they love milkweed, we're going to grow milkweed. And my mom said that if I grew it, she would put it in the backyard. You know, the problem, the thing that I am worried about is we have lots of bunnies back there. And what if the bunnies freaking eat it? Like, so I got to find some way to sort of deter the bunnies, but not something that's bad for a butterfly. So if you have any suggestions, that would be great. So there's milkweed number one. Because I would love to hear what you do. I've read lots of little sort of old wives tales like bunnies don't like human hair. Like that sort of thing. That is one um, that I've heard. But I don't know. I, I, I really want to try to mitigate the bunny factor, you know. It would just really suck if I put in all this work. I ordered the seeds. I grew them from nothing. And then... The animal that's supposed to want to eat it doesn't even get to eat it, you know? So I'm taking the little wrappers off the, the plugs. I know some people don't do that. Some people do do that. I'm doing it. I don't know. The roots on these little babies haven't grown big enough yet to be intertwined in there. So I'm not hurting the plant by taking them out. Sometimes when I buy, like, actual plants, those little bees are still around it. And, like, the roots are all through it. And it just feels... I don't know. Some areas of the internet call them the death plug because the roots get all kind of stuck in it. But then other areas of the internet tell you don't remove it. It doesn't matter. I don't know what I think. And then I'm going to water these um, afterwards with some diluted fertilizer and not um, my bios or my Marvel. Like I'm using actual like ProMix root booster synthetic fertilizer because I just feel like it's probably stronger. So this is a question that I have. So I tried to grow white sage, which I know is a whole debacle in and of itself. But, it, like, it did grow. And it is growing, but it also flopped over. I don't want to give up on it. It's still growing. So I'm not going to give up on it. But it almost looks like it wants me to. <laughs> I don't know. Worst comes to worst, it dies, right? Like, does that suck? Yeah. Is it ultimately not the end of the world? Also, yeah. I bought these buckets at Michael's years ago. I think they were for, like, they're supposed to be, like, for party favors for a Halloween party, but I use them to transport dirt from my big container in my room to the kitchen table here where I do most of my repotting. It's just the nicest, like, the biggest table that I can easily get to to do my repotting at. 
but also one that's like really easy to clean. I don't have to like worry about it. The other table that we have in the dining room is like one that belonged to my stepdad's parents or something. And I don't know. I just feel like if I'm ever going to wreck a table, it's going to be that one. So I'll try to give myself the least amount of opportunities possible. We'll see what happens. Like I said, this could die. Um, and it would suck, but it is what it is. So we're going to do my chamomile next, which is inarguably the plant that's doing the best. Now, did I possibly put too many seeds in here? Possibly or probably. Um, but I would really love chamomile flowers. It's not even that I want the chamomile to, like, drink or anything. I just think chamomile flowers are so pretty. That sort of classic daisy look is probably my favorite flower. So to have it in such a sort of tiny, tiny baby form... I just think would be so freaking cute. Like, imagine I have a little bush of chamomile on my windowsill. Like, when we, when we put those cauldrons back. I just think it could be so freaking cute. Okay, so some of these, because I over <laughs> planted it, um, are grown into the netting, which I didn't realize until the moment when I tried to take the netting off. Eh, not so bad. Like I said, this is kind of overplanted, so if we lose a couple, it's fine. I'm just trying to break up some of the, the dirt from the very top. Yeah, we're going to set up, I think, the arrows bucket. Of course, I've run out of dirt with one lap, right? So it looks kind of a mess right now. But that's the chamomile, and then, like, there's really only... Oh, I dropped it. Oh, my God, I made a huge fucking mess. <laughs> Gotta go get the little vacuum. And then, so, there's a couple... Like, this is just a piece of chamomile that grew in a different spot. So, we're not gonna bother potting that up. I don't think this... I don't understand what's going on here. So, we're not gonna pot it up. So we're just gonna pot up this other piece of milkweed. But I have to now go get more dirt and something to clean this up with. Let me show it to you first. I can't believe you've done this. There's a little bit on the floor. Uh, I'm not positive that that's close enough to the light. I think they need to be way closer. When I think about the seed starting kits that I see, they're like six inches away. So maybe they're going to have to stay in the kitchen. Which kind of sucks, but it's also kind of great because that means they're not in my way. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to have to grab my fertilizer stuff and bring them all back into the kitchen. Ugh. So I made a mess on the table and I have to clean it up, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to leave them like that in there and then put it back up. I just feel like on the little microwave ledge there with the hydro uh, garden, that light is much stronger. It's on 16 hours a day. Like, I just feel like that'll be better for them. So we're going to put them back up there now. So now I am going to start some new seeds for the little seed thing that goes in my windowsill. Because the other seeds that I started in here, they just like, I don't know, I think I I kind of neglected them. And then they were dampening off. And we're just going to start all over again because why not? I'm not going to start any more chamomile. Um, because that one in the kitchen I'm fairly confident of. And I don't know that I'm going to do any milkweed. I think I'll just do a bunch of my other seeds. I think I have like pansies and stuff but I'm not gonna sit here and record it all because I really want to listen to the new Casey Musgraves album like listen I it's not that I was not a fan of Casey Musgraves I like her I think she's incredible but it just never really happened for me like I was too busy with other musical artists and then this new album that she just put out called Deeper Well it is so cute so like it's like cottage corey cutesy fairy mushroomy like it fits that vibe very well it's not really country it's just very guitar heavy it's so good it's so cute it came out a week after ariana grande's eternal sunshine album which i also really like um but i just don't find myself gravitating to it the same way i'm gravitating to deeper well i don't know what's going on in the music industry these days it's like all the pop girlies came out at once like a new ariana album a new Casey Musgraves album we just learned yesterday that Billie Eilish is putting out a new album and then of course we only have like oh my god another week and then we have uh Taylor's Tortured Poets Department which I'm sure is going to be incredible and also heartbreaking because her and Joe were together for so long and like sometimes I feel like people listen to Taylor Swift's music and 
think every single line and every single lyric is autobiographical, and I don't know that that's the truth. Like, I feel like when you're a songwriter, you can take sort of liberties with things. And so, like, is it a breakup album about Joe? Probably. But, like, she also could take elements of other breakups and things that happen to friends. And that's why, like, I don't like when people are like, this line is about this person. Because she will She'll never tell us, so you can't really know. I don't know, I'm rambling. I'm really looking forward to Taylor's album, but for now, I'm on my Casey Musgraves life. Those little ladybugs, I think they're the fake ladybugs, the Asian beetles. They are getting in, and I don't know how. I just saw one on my wall, but it's gone already. And there's a bunch on the window on the outside. Hmm. So there's one there. And then there's one... I don't know why there's, like, leaves in my screen, but there's another one there. Let's see if I can find it with my hand for you. Okay, there's my finger. You see, he's right there. And then there were two more at the top of the window, but I don't see them right now. Oh, I see one of them. How do I... There, can you see him? There he is. He just went behind there. Okay. And then there was one on the other side, but who knows where he is now. Is it a real... Can I tell on my camera, maybe? Is it a real ladybug or a, one of the Asian beetles? You don't want to focus? Okay. I think it's one of the Asian beetles because it looks more orange than red. They operate pretty much the same as ladybugs so they actually will do some pest control for me if i want them to um but the unfortunate thing about the asian beetles versus the ladybugs is they do bite so over here on my window by my bed if one happens to get in my bed it will bite me so i'm not really too happy about that Lena, you want to play. You're in a playful mood. I can see it. What's wrong with you? Are you just lazy? I think that might be it. <laughs> we'll try this. This is like her favorite thing. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah, that's what she wanted. So difficult. All right, so it's been a couple of days since I last updated. I'm so sorry, uh, but I just took this plant out. This is my Monstera Celtipicana. I did end up potting it into the skeleton planter, uh, and my stepdad helped me reinforce it, so it's much better now. And I took it out because I was going to water it, but I don't need to. I'm a little bit annoyed because it's really heavy and hard to get out, but because it was out, I took the opportunity to soak it uh, like spray it with Bios's herbal pesticide. They just put out this product. I had been waiting to do a Bios order so I could buy their diatomaceous earth and put it in the soil, especially the plants that are going outside. Um, but I, I was waiting and waiting and waiting for them to launch the pesticide so I could just do one order. So I did that and it came in. So I had mixed the diatomaceous earth water already, but I don't need it. So we'll just let this strip dry for a bit and then I'll put it back. I decided the seeds I started the other day weren't getting enough light at the window, so I did make this sort of leaning tower of things um, to hold them up under this light. I think that's close enough. It should be good. I just added more water into them, so that's why the top look at, looks extra clear, because I did open it. My seeds in the kitchen don't look very good at all. I don't think they're getting enough light, even though they're right under that light. I don't know what's going on. So we're trying it again. Um, hopefully these do better. I'm hopeful. I'm choosing to be hopeful. <laughs> there are so many clips that I thought I had for this video that I don't, um, because I imagine shooting them, I guess. I don't know what's up, but honestly, like, I, 
I've lost the whole last month of my life to Stardew Valley. Like, that's all I do. And it's like, there's so much stuff to do. Like, I can farm. I can grow my crops. I can go into the mines. Like, there's just so many. There's endless things to do in Stardew Valley. Um, but today, I am doing plant chores because I haven't done plant chores in a hot minute. And some of them are so freaking dry. I just finished wiping down my fiddle leaf fig. Let me show you. So, look at her. She's beautiful now. She's been dusted. She's ready to go. Um, apparently I never had a clip telling you on this vlog about my caterpillars. I'm gonna do a whole little YouTube short about them when, um, the process is complete. But I got the, this, this caterpillar kit, and they're gonna become painted lady butterflies. So they're just in their chrysalis form right now. One of them I'm kind of thinking is not gonna make it. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus. So, yes, okay, so the one on the left looks good. It looks right. The one on the right there doesn't look good it looks kind of shriveled so i don't know if that one's gonna make it but we're gonna hope for the best um and be prepared for the worst and that's only having one butterfly and then um as you know i've been growing milkweed um so there actually are kits you can get for monarch butterflies so maybe i'll get some of those kits but i have to restart the milkweed so earlier in this vlog i up potted all my seeds but I kind of underestimated how much you have to water them, and a lot of them died. Um, the chamomile is still okay. It's on my windowsill now. And one of the milkweeds. So I reset that sort of thing of 12 seeds, um, and I put them in the kitchen, and they're all milkweed. Um, the other seeds that I have set up behind me in my plant area, they haven't done anything yet. And it's been like, I don't know. It's it's <laughs> When you're like unemployed and you just sit in the same room all day playing Stardew Valley, like... I don't know how long it's been. The vlog has helped me. I think it's been like two weeks since I planted them. So maybe I'm expecting too much too soon. But we're going to leave them. I'm not going to touch them anyway. Um, but I really hope they grow. And I really hope the milkweed in the kitchen grows. Because I really want to have some. But as of right now, I only have one milkweed little seed left. And my chamomile on the windowsill beside my rosemary. Which my rosemary is like an actual plant. So that's fine. Um... What else do I want to talk to you about? Okay, Tortured Poets Department. I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section below. I've seen a lot of mixed reviews. My only problem, or my only sort of thing with the album is that it's... Because it's so long, I don't find that I want to listen to it end-to-end. -end. It's the very first Taylor Swift album that I find that I skip around. Like, Red? Mm. I would say all the way back to Speak Now. I listen to original Speak Now. I listen to one of her albums end to end. It's really just her debut album and Fearless that I don't listen to end to end. Everything else start to finish. Because this one is so long, I find myself like somewhere in the middle. I find that the songs kind of sound a little bit similar to each other. Like, I think there's a couple that could have been cut out if I'm being so freaking honest with you. But it's still a great album. And I see a lot of people talk about a couple of like songs like Smallest Man in the World and I Can Do It With a Broken Heart. But nobody is talking about what a great song the actual title song is. I'm losing my voice all of a sudden. Like, Tortured Poets Department, that is my favorite song on the album, I think. It is so, like, 2010's coming-of-age movie summer cutesy like I think it's so cute I love that that was maybe my favorite and after I listened to the whole album all 31 songs like that one was the one that was still stuck in my head after and uh the other one the prophecy not one of my favorites and then I saw a tiktok that was like an amv of harry potter like actual like harry and about that him in that song and that totally changed it to me for me like now I listen to it I think about poor little harry and how all he wants his friends and it breaks my freaking heart so that one that one went from being like not really on my list of favorites to being up there because it makes me so sad for a tiny baby harry potter <laughs> but yeah torch department like the actual song is probably my favorite on the album as of right now it can always change you know like i didn't love reputation the first time i listened to it and then now it's like one of my top two favorite Taylor Swift albums so like I change my music taste a lot so we'll, we'll see but I do still find myself going to Ari's new album and Casey's new album as well. It's not like Evermore or Folklore where I was like just obsessed with this Taylor Swift album nonstop for like weeks on end. You know what I mean? But it's still good. Like I'm not a I'm not being a hater. Do I have anything else to talk to you about? Do I have anything else to show you? I think I just have to keep slaving away at my plant chores, like cleaning leaves, watering things. The uh, staghorn fern I forgot all about, so it's in the shower right now when my mom comes home from work and hopefully she'll shower it for me. Um my desk is, like, in the worst state it's ever been in. Like, there's just stuff everywhere. I really need to fix it. Look at this cute little mini. 
Is that Michaels? Look at it. Speaking of Michaels, they came out with this new, like, goth collection for summer. It's called the Nevermore Collection, so it's all very, like, Edgar Allan Poe themed. It's not for me. There's not really a... It's that sort of gothy, but, like, with pink mixed in, which I love pink, and I love goth, but I don't love them together as much. It's a very cute collection, and I think a lot of people would really like it. I just wish there were more things in it. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm still waiting. Listen, we're getting close to Halloween stuff being in stores again. Okay? All we, all I have to do is wait till like the beginning of July, and then we're good to go. So that th that's just around the corner. Hopefully, I have a job and like a source of income by then. <laughs> but as of right now, I don't. So I was repotting my Monstera Peru because I don't like the dirt that it came in because it's like this really chunky, thick stuff. So I already took it out and I was just gonna clean up the soil and I like unleashed mushrooms. I have never seen these. Like I've seen one or two here or there, but I've never seen. So freaking many of them. I wouldn't have repotted the Peru if I had known these were in there. <gasps> but what do I do with them now? Should I put them, like, in Roger's tank? Look at them all. Oh, I feel so bad. There's so freaking many. I'm going to try to collect as many as I can. I'm going to put them in the gecko tank because I really just think mushrooms in the gecko tank would be so much fun. And you know the isopods would eat them and... Ah! Can you believe it is almost 9pm and I'm just now done my plant chores? That's what happens when you have 80 houseplants and you let them get really dry because you fall into a Stardew Valley hole. Like, hello? And some of them were so dry that, like, I would sit them in the water because I bought them water, right? So I would sit them in the water and then they would, like, pop out. And then I would hold the pots down and the dirt and the plant inside would jump out. That's bad. But before we end this video, I just want to show you that I have started another little cozy hobby. Um, other than crocheting, even though I am still very actively crocheting. I'm making these... I'll show them to you in a second. But back to what I was talking about. I've actually started my little witch house mini. If you remember a couple of vlogs back, I got the little mini witch house kit. But it was overwhelming. And I didn't want to start it that day, but I have since started it. So I've made this little shelf, this little shelf, and this little shelf. Um, it is very difficult, but the main difficulty for me is that I get the glue everywhere. Like, it sticks to my hands, it sticks to everything. So, like, especially this one. How do I fix that? So I've come to you in my time of need. Those of you who do minis... How do I get this extra glue off? Do you have any recommendations? Or do you have any recommendations at all for using the glue? Because that is the hardest part for me is that I get the glue everywhere. And then it looks ugly. And then I'm mad at myself for the glue looking ugly. So that's kind of why I've only made these three. The next couple things I have to make are shelves as well. And then it, I kind of went through the whole instruction booklet. And it looks like towards the end is where we start building like all the little potion bottles and all the cute stuff. So we kind of got to get the more boring stuff out of the way first. Um, which is good because it helps me learn how to do it. Um, so I'm going to build the witch house and maybe in the next vlog, which I'm going to start shooting tomorrow and not take a whole month to upload. Um, we'll have some, some little footage of me making the stuff, but I kind of wanted to start it without you just in case it was really frustrating and I like cried. <laughs> and what I've been crocheting are these little flowers. Aren't they so cute? So in the pattern that I have, they're actually are supposed to be ghosts. But I'm just making them as flowers for now because, like, not everyone wants little ghosts. So I made these flowers for my mom. And then I made some for my friend Alyssa as well. And she has them hung up in her car over her, like, rearview mirror. So I made some purple ones, some blue ones, and then I also made some pink ones. And then I started making a bird out of this. That, I don't know what's going on with the color balance. And I started making a bird out of my pink yarn. But I need your honest opinion. Does this pink just look like a chicken that's been plucked? I thought it was pink enough, but I think it might just be too skin color-y. Like, I think this little bird is going to end up looking like someone plucked his feathers so i might just frog him and make a whole bunch of blue ones for the next market um and purple because i kind of want to keep you know these 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 markets are season themed they're held on or as close to the equinoxes as we can get these sort of witchy sabbats if you will um so 
I want to try to keep it in theme for the summer one if I can, because then the next one is fall, and that's, like, my time to shine. Um, so I've got to make a couple of bluish birds. See her little angry face? She just sits there looking kind of angry. <laughs> Anyway, um, I think that's it for this vlog. I'm sorry I kind of abandoned it halfway through and then picked it back up again. I blame Stardew Valley. Like, it's literally not my fault. It's Stardew Valley's fault. <laughs> that's all I did this whole time. But yeah, leave any questions or comments or whatever uh, down in the comments box below. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!